Yo, real quick, it is your boy King Tynex here. And before I start the video, I would just like to say a couple of things. Um, number one, I have a Discord server. The link to it will be in the description below. Another thing is, while well, you guys should totally check out Xylo Arts. I'm not actually sure if I'm pronouncing their name correctly, but um, basically, they make quite a bit of art. They even seem to have like their own sort of comic series that's going to be in the making in the making eventually. So I'm basically just gonna give a shout out to them, especially since they're in my Discord and they give plenty of ideas from time to time. So it's basically me just showing love back. And yeah, that's basically all I got to say. I'll probably also also display some of the, um, what do you call it again? Some of the ints on the, on the video as well. And yeah, for right now, that's all I got to say. Play that intro. <laughs> In the whipping, I'm whipping the soul out of Chin the tone when I'm fessing like Pilates Why you front, you act like you somebody Keep a trail in the veil, how I go by I was stuck in the rut, I was nobody I've been looking for something to go by There's an art to the hustle like yo, got it Kick out a kid back and hit like a new shot In the whipping, I'm whipping the soul out of Chin the tone when I'm Issei had unlocked the three Tomoe Sharingan Once he witnessed the sight of Rainier Pure fury enveloped his height at that moment. Although the others tried convincing him not to make any drastic decisions here, Issei simply disregarded all he, all he said. He charged, he charged for, forward and dodged a couple of attacks from Rainier along the way. She was surprised to see how easily Issei was able to get past her attacks. It was as if his speed had increased tenfold ever since their last matchup. Granted, he was a mere human during that time. Once Issei was within arm's reach, he kneeled, well, he kneed her in the face, slightly dazing the leather community girl. She clutched her nose in pain. It was already bleeding. She tisked before getting back into that fight. Issei vanished though. She looked around before, feeling a tap from behind her. Her eyes widened, widened before she tried, turning herself around, Excalibur in hand. She was ready to slice the boy into two. She failed though. Instead, she was given a couple of wounds from the back. They were claw, they were claw mics. Rainer screamed in pain before flying high into the sky. She saw Issei was still on the ground but trying to pursue her. She grinned wickedly seeing this. She had an idea now. She grabbed the sword and as soon as Issei was about to reach a position, she plunged the sword into his forehead. Issei, Issei immediately fell to the ground with the sword still plung, plunged into his skull. She couldn't believe it was that easy to kill the boy. No. It should have been easier to kill the boy in actuality. He hardly even gave her the chance to use Excalibur before bombarding her with attacks. It was as if they didn't know the specialty of the sword at the time. <laughs> what an idiot. She floated down to the ground and was about to retrieve Excalibur. <clears throat> in order to kill the rest of these pests, but Something grabbed her leg. Rainer looked down to see an arm appearing from the ground. It dragged her down as well. She practically squealed at this. Easily appeared from underneath the ground and slammed into her. It was a headbutt to the stomach this time. This knocked the air out of her. When she saw Issei, the only thing she could be thinking about was how he was still alive. The Issei she stabbed with the sword vanished right before, right before her eyes at that moment. This unnerved Rainier. The devil shouldn't have been this strong. It was either they were that strong or she was really that weak. 
she had Excalibur for crying out loud. She didn't get a chance to really think about it for much longer though as Issei was walking over to her. This was the first time she really had a good look at the boy's eyes and they were peculiar to say the very least. Red with black teardrops and a ring in both eyes. What was that about? She didn't get much time to really think about it though as her body began to ache even more than before. And suddenly appeared, appeared crawling over her skin. She screamed in horror as they began to bite at her skin consuming it. The pain was insufferable but... To the rest of the world, she was a lunatic screaming madness. Issei turned to Kiba. So, do you want the honors of killing her or will you be satisfied with the sword? Issei asked. Kiba created several swords and tossed them one to use. Issei gave Kiba a thumbs up before walking over to Rainer and decapitating her. The amount of satisfaction he felt at that moment was amazing. It felt like a boulder was lifted off of his back. Although we had to deal with some nagging from Rios afterwards, it was worth it. He and Kiba were able to accomplish their goals here. They finally had their vengeance after so long, Kiba especially. The happiness didn't last long though. They never really dealt with Galilee, unfortunately. He wasn't that great of a concern at the, uh, at the time, but they were unaware of the fact he wasn't only in cahoots with Rainier. There were there was also the issue with the girls from the church, Zenobia and Arena. He say figured that Arena wouldn't have at least come visit his place for old time's sake, but she was nowhere to be found. He couldn't he couldn't con contact her friends in Ovia either either considering he didn't know her number. Well, that was assuming she even had a phone to begin with. Their curiosity would soon be answered though, although they were Celebrating at first, Issei ended up sensing a strong presence approaching the area. It was a very distinct magical signature as well, huge in comparison to what he was used to facing. Valpe Galilei and an interesting being who introduced himself as Coco Beale gave them to gave them a gift of sorts. It was a beaten and battered arena. Issei's eyes widened seeing her condition. He had never seen her like this before. He looked up and glared at them. How could they have done this to her? Issei was about to fight but they disappeared. They weren't that far away though. They were outside, cool academy grounds. That's where they were. Coco Beale wanted to fight them. He wanted to fight for the sake of fighting. Peace was so boring nowadays for him. If it was left to him, he would have continued the faction war for several more ages until he, until he himself died in combat. But the best thing he could do now was create a second faction war. It was genius in his mind. The Grimmery team was forced to face a group of Cerberus creatures, but Issei was livid. Issei activated his, his boosted gear and swiftly slaughtered them. With Citri's team, they ended up developing a barrier to protect the school. Kiba ran forward, following right behind Issei, but for different reasons. He was going for Galilee now. Now that he was the only one connected to the Holy Sword project, he had no issue slaughtering the man. Issei's eyes were focused on Coco Beale. The fallen angel leader, leader smiked, seeing Issei run towards him. He seemed to be a cut above the rest considering just, just how easily he was able to slaughter the Cerberus. The boy apparently also killed Rainer, despite her wielding Excalibur. He was a very interesting character indeed. 
he wanted to know how much the boy could dish out that and more importantly how much he could tank or at least handle anyway he charged up one of his stronger attacks and was planning on testing easy with it arena uh, arena <laughs> was well despite her injured state saw what was going on and fear began to envelop her she was be she was being healed by asia but she got up from her resting place she needed to protect isei she couldn't live with herself if she let someone she knew for so many years die right before her eyes she unsheathed her sword and hoped hoped that she could at the very least reflect some of the strength from Coco Beale's attack. She was at least part of the church, so for all she knew, she could do something here. She was wrong. Very, very wrong. Arena jumped in front of Issei, taking the attack for him. Issei paused when he saw this. He couldn't believe what he was seeing right now. Memories began to flash through his head of all the times he spent with Arena when they were young. Why did it have to be her that died here? He was preparing to dodge the attack from Coco Beale but in Arena's eyes. It must have been something else, as if he was going to run right into Coco Beale's attack. Even after all these years, they still cared for each other. A raging mix of emotions began to consume Issei here. Sadness, anger, disappointment, confusion. So many emotions he couldn't process properly at the moment. It was like a flood at this point. Tears began to form in his eyes as he continued to stare at Arena's burned corpse. Ah, uh, well, would you look at that? I guess the girl wasn't strong enough to handle just one of my attacks. Disappointing, really. I figured she would have been stronger. Coco Beale laughed. Issei could practically feel his eyes shift positions now. Congrats, boy. You've managed to unlock the Mangekyo, and it even seems that it's the eternal Mangekyo, too. I did have to borrow my deceased, my deceased brother's eyes in my old life, so I suppose it makes sense. Madara explained. Issei didn't respond though. The raging storm of emotions were consuming him now. It wasn't simply for unlocking the ultimate state of the Sharingan anymore. No, instead something else was also achieved here. Issei's red armor began to cover him. Before it evolved, it changed in size and appearance. It was more dragon-like in nature now, and they were even long. There were even long claws for this form. The helmet had teeth now, and, and Issei didn't appear to be in the right state of mind any longer. Several boosts, several boosts could be heard as Issei marched over the co Coco Beal. Despite all the attacks Coco Beal attempted to do to Issei, he tanked all of them. One energy blast from Issei was all he needed in order to exterminate the pest known as Coco Beal, but he was still rampaging. He was causing destruction all over. He's, uh, everyone trying their best to calm Issei down, but it wasn't working. Things were getting so bad that another person ended up joining the fray. Everyone's hearts sank when they saw what they thought was another form of trouble, but he only had one purpose here. Well, it was originally to take down Coco Beal, but now it was to stop the Red Dragon Emperor from causing any more damage while not in the right state of mind. They were in the Juggernaut Driving so early on, Valley be began to divide Issei's strength in half as rapidly as possible. During this time, the others who were here began to attempt to calm Issei down and pull him down. It was a struggle on each side though. Issei seemed to only be acting on instinct, but eventually Valley's divine dividing caught up with Issei's boosts. They were able to drive Issei's juggernaut form into the ground and overpower him until he was left in a near unconscious state. 
Issei's eyes darted towards Rias right before he went unconscious, so he demanded that Rias save Arena's life here. Valley was pretty impressed with his undying will. Even after all of this, Issei wouldn't back down. Rias didn't respond at first. Right now, she just wanted Issei to rest. He had done more than enough today, but he refused to request. He would only submit if she granted his request. In the end, Rias was the one to give out first. She followed up with Issei's request by having As Asuya heal Arena. She took out an evil piece not too long later and reincarnated her. Issei seeing this calm down and he fell into his subconscious state. That is all for right now, Titan Clan. It is your boy King Titan, King Titan X signing out. You guys already know the deal. Peace.